Welcome back to the channel, Guardians. With Season 22 and the final shape reveal less than one week away, our final crafted weapon review of this season will cover a sniper rifle that has taken me by surprise in both PvE and PvP, with some excellent perks to choose from for both game modes, the Supremacy. Blood, sweat and tears go into the making of my video, so slap that like button if you do find this informative. Let's begin. So, the Supremacy is a kinetic sniper rifle of the Rapid Fire sub archetype family, which is obtainable in the Last Wish raid and craftable. A quick note on this, if you're watching this video the week it was released, Last Wish is currently farmable, meaning you have the chances to farm red borders, including this sniper rifle. Let's cover PvP first. With sniper rifles in general, handling is a highly desirable stat, and its base stat of 68, which can go all the way up to 93, allows the sniper to become very snappy, even without snapshot sight selected, bringing its ADS speed down from a base of 0.37 seconds to 0.32 seconds, dramatically increasing swapping between the sniper rifle also. Its scope is very good, having 40 zoom, although its poor range stat makes it tricky to use at long distance, although it excels at medium ranges. It also has a strong base aim assist stat of 77, which can be nearly maxed out with other factors, and unlike other rapid fire sniper rifles of the same slot, such as the recently released Distant Pool and Creative's Revenge, it can roll snapshot sights. By doing a direct comparison versus these snipers, a Distant Pool has inferior stats, however, Kratos does have overall better stats, but when you take into account the perk pools, both, Supremacy has better. The only catch with Rapid Fire snipers are its TTK in competitive modes such as Trials, as Rapid Fires cannot res snipe, making it have a strong disadvantage over other sub-archetypes in competitive game modes, doing 292 crit damage, therefore you're better off using it in 6s. It also takes 3 body shots to kill, meaning it's less forgiving when missing crits. With the PvP overview out of the way, let's check the best role for the Crucible. PSA, this is my opinion after doing testing. God rolls are effectively personal preferences. Let me know in the comments what works for you in both PvP and PvE. With the masterwork, handling is the play for PvP, bringing the standling stat up to 78, and paired with fluted barrel, it raises it up to 93, achieving that 0.32 second ADS speed, allowing for quick scopes. The second column goes to ricochet rounds, which grants a buff to both range and stability, the former needing a bump due to the poor range stat on the weapon. For the third column, there are two obvious ones. Keep away, whilst being a decent option, granting better range and accuracy when no guardians are in proximity, Snapshot Sight exists. If Snapshot slotted, the ADS goes down to 0.27 seconds from 0.32. It doesn't sound like much, but it's very noticeable when quickscoping and is a very desirable perk on any sniper rifle. Finally, the only winner in the fourth column is Opening Shot. Even though Elemental Capacitor on Arc subclasses could max out the handling stat, it only provides an additional 0.01 seconds of ADS reduction. Opening Shot, paired with the Targeting Adjuster mod, a maxes out aim assist, and paired with snapshot allows for some nasty plays. The gun aims for you. To recap that god roll, a handling masterwork paired with fluted barrel in the first column, followed by ricochet rounds in the second, then snapshot sights in the third, and finally opening shot. This weapon, out of all the rapid fire kinetic slots, is probably the best one for the crucible, but is it worth enhancing those perks? No. First and foremost, this weapon excels more in PvE, so unless you're planning on crafting one for PvE and one for PvP, it's not worth the alloys. And secondly, rapid fires are not meta snipers. Precision and aggressive frame snipers will always trump rapid fires due to the res snipe issue. There are better snipers in the kinetic slot. Give Thoughtless a try. Are you still with me? Awesome. If you find this informative, slap that like button for the algorithm and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Channel memberships are also available for a small monthly fee which goes towards upgrading my tech, where you will unlock additional perks such as early video access, play alongs and much more. You'll find a link in the description. With PvP out of the way, in PvE this sniper has a very peculiar perk pool that makes it very strong in certain scenarios such as raid and dungeon boss DPS. Firstly, it's a kinetic sniper, meaning it does 10% more precision damage than elemental snipers, including stasis and strand. Due to its situational usage, mainly to be used as a DPS weapon, rapid fires require stability and no recoil to control the continuous fire, and one roll in particular, as long as you land crits, can fire well beyond the sniper's inventory size without reloading at all. It's ideal to use against raid and dungeon bosses that are stunned, such as Oryx or the Spire Harpy, allowing for easy continuous crits. 
Its origin trait also plays a strong part on this weapon during DPS, as Explosive Pact grants stability bonuses to the weapon on throwing a grenade, which increases in stacks based on certain conditions, such as grenade kills or throwing healing grenades, helping control the weapon when blowing your ammunition. From a PvE god roll point of view, the must work to go for is stability, allowing easier control of the sniper's shake when rapid firing. In the first column, there is a toss-up between arrowhead and polygonal rifling. The former grants recoil pattern control, whilst the latter controls the stability on the weapon. After testing both out, arrowhead stopped the deviation of the weapon better than polygonal rifling, so my choice is arrowhead break. In the second column, appended mag adds an extra round to the magazine, bringing it up to 7 from 6. The third column is an easy one. Rewind rounds grants additional ammo to the magazine based on the number of hits before the mag ends. And with 4 times the charm in the 4th column, the gun literally burns through its entire inventory, meaning starting mag and reserves without having to reload as long as you land your crits. For the sake of testing, there are a ton of decent perks in the 4th column, outside of 4 times the charm. And I tested all of them against the Spire Harpy in the Spire of the Watcher Dungeon. Warper Weapon grants 15% damage on bosses, whilst Focus Fury, when procced, grants 20%. Both these perks did around only 550k damage during a single phase. Remember that these perks force the sniper to reload at a certain point when reroll wound stops working. Bait and Switch on the other hand did over 640k damage as this perk, when procced, grants a 35% damage buff. However, just like the other perks, it forces reloading and the buff needs to be reactivated when it runs out, meaning swapping weapons and another common theme between these perks was the ammo economy. The Supremacy would run out of ammo before phases ended. Although 4 times the charm doesn't have damage buffs, the ammo economy is much stronger than the other perks, having ammo left over after damage phases. Although the Sniper did 10k damage less than Bait and Switch, over a longer damage phase, this perk combination would have done more damage over time, meaning Rewind Rounds and 4 times the charm is the best perk combination on this weapon. The TLDR, the PvE God Roll, Stability Masterwork, paired with Arrowhead Break to give control to the weapon during DPS, then Tactical Mag to increase the magazine size, allowing Rewind Rounds and 4 times the charm to stack on each other, making reloading obsolete with very strong ammo reserves. This gun is amazing, and one that I always used even before the perk pool update in PvP, and now it's one of the best legendary PvE snipers for DPS. This gun gets a 5 out of 5 on the scale. It's a jack of all trades, with the small exception of Comp Crucible. Please hit me up with your thoughts in the comment section. That's it for this video. Please drop a like and subscribe, and check out the membership section on how you can support the channel in new ways. Thank you for watching. Following Thursday's Twib, we will have one more video to go through before the new season starts, with suggestions on builds to try out at launch. This was Plasma Alchemist. Your viewership is much appreciated. Until next time, see you later.